And she likes to like warn you that we're going to record it. Okay. Nicholas, great to have you back. We ready? Little short poll. Who's got A as an alpha? B as a broccoli. Got a couple. C as a Caroline. D as a dogwood. E as an Ellen. F as an I don't know. Okay. All right. If the monopolist produces at the algebra rather than the profit maximizer. All right, so um, if the monopolist, Kyle, what is, how do I find the profit maximizer? Where is it? MC equals MR, great. I'm gonna take it then. I'm gonna take it up to the price and then, all right. So, right, so this would be, consumer surplus, right, at the profit maximizing. But they said the monopolist is going to produce that allocatively efficient. Allocatively efficient is J. Uh, that is. No, you're thinking of productively efficient. MC equals demand. MC equals demand, allocatively. Get that, get that. So this would be allocative efficiency. Okay. So now, if I took that across, right above the price, below demand, this, the green is allocative efficiency. The blue would be at the profit maximizer. So the first thing, did it increase or decrease? It increased, right? And it increased by, could someone give me what this geometric thing would be called? Okay, a trapezoid, P5, J, K, P4. Is that right? Is that dogwood? All right. Question. Okay. That, that's a question like on tomorrow's quiz. All right, Charles, you good? You have a question to ask? Uh, Say that again. Yeah. Just chapter three. This is chapter three. Are you good now, Charles? Tomorrow's like. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we have in store for you. All right. Now you're going to say, why is this circle C? Anyhow, even though I did this on purpose, I took the blunder already today. I was going to copy it and put it in your notes, but then I didn't want to waste the paper. So I wanted to copy the wrong thing. So you went over the end. Yeah. Three blunders for the curve. 65. Yeah. They were trying, my last class was trying to negotiate. Like double or nothing for 100. Like if you get to 100, it's a 16% if you don't get done. All right. Nick, you're in charge. Let us know that we're God. Uh, Lord, thank you for gathering us here today for SCE time. Help us have a good rest of our day. Then John Bucky goes out. Did it, do any of you write the school newspaper? No. I guess no one bothered to hand it out. But I read the paper. It's vastly improved. It gains on I mean, last year's paper was. The closest thing to embarrassing. All right. Um, 
Your notes are due tonight by 11.59. I'll review today, tonight at 7.45. Practice quiz is posted. I did um, a video going over all 12 of the practice questions, why the answer is right, what I think could be on the quiz, um, the actual quiz. I think it's beneficial. That's up to you. I'll also be here tomorrow morning um, before school at 7.45, and then the quiz is on Thursday. We'll go into monopolistic competition, chapter 17. There's very little new learning in monopolistic competition, okay? What, why? Because it's monopolies and perfect competition combined. So you really have learned almost all the material. So that should be an easy chapter for us. Start reading. There's a second guy who came up to me and said, I still had to read every night and the class is easier. All right, so I don't know. I might just like, if you're not doing well, make you read every night and just, I don't know. I, don't know. I probably won't do that. All right, all right, 8.10, more practice. You got it, Luca, you asked, I'll give it to you. And by the way, I decided to write exactly how you guys wrote, how to lost box. That's how the person wrote it. Uh, I think he wants the lost box in a monopoly, how to find it. I'll find it. All right, you got to do this tomorrow. And all right, so we got MC, we got the man, we've got MO. You just always find the profit maximizer and you get up to price, right? You bring it up to demand. If it's losing money, the ATC is going to be up here. You just go straight on the profit maximizer line up to the ATC and across, and that's your loss box. Okay. Why is M why is MR not equal to demand? Because for um, a monopoly to sell more units, they have to lower their price. All right. The profit maximizer. Where MC crosses MR. Productively efficient is where MC crosses ATC. So this is productively efficient. All that says is producing at the least cost. The profit maximizer is producing where you make the most money or lose the least money. Okay. Natural men, yes, sir. They really should be equal at quantity one. If you didn't draw it, like, like say on an FRQ, if you weren't perfect like that, they're not usually that good. Okay. Um, MC crossing And it's the least cost. Allocatively efficient while we're talking about them, MC crosses the man. You're going to need to know these just for like the quiz, like the drill question, where they might ask you the price. All right. Physically. Oh, Charles. I was going to say, so there can't be any loss if you're producing it productively efficient. Oh, yeah. You, we lost. Oh, if you, yeah, you could lose money. How would you calculate that? Because it's already on the box. What do you mean? Like if you're producing it productively efficient, you can't make the loss box. Oh, because she, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is productively efficient always my problem with MC? So it's like, like, by definition, Oliver, when ATC is at its lowest, MC crosses it. Okay. Okay. Because as, and just think of your, like, think of an average, as the additional, like, test comes in above ATC, it's going to pull the average up. Okay. Um, a natural monopoly, if I'm looking at it, how can I tell it's a natural monopoly? Just looking at the graph. ATC is downward sloping. Okay. Remember, natural monopoly serves one. And we did this, right? We we did it. Okay. Any questions on any of these? All right. If you take out like yesterday's notes, I just want to finish some stuff off. All right. Ah. Hi, Austin. Great to see you. Hi, Mr. Bressler. Hi. 
All right, we're just getting started. I let everyone go. It's just me and you. I told them to take the day off. Oh, sick. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyhow, here is, like we said about a natural monopoly, ATC is down with sloping. You, you see that in the blue line is the ATC. If ATC is down with sloping, MC has to be below it. These are the three spots. And I know we went over this yesterday, just as a quick review, because we got it. The unregulated, the MC equals MR, right here. That's what the monopoly wants. The uh, MC crosses demand, socially optimal, allocated efficient. That's what people want. They usually compromise at fair return, which is zero economic profit. Okay? So those are the three spots. Now, why is the MC not crossing the ATC? Huh? Oh, because um, this is a this is like an exception on a natural monopoly because it's down with slope. So you know you could maybe argue this is its lowest point and it starts going up. On the FRQ, could we label um, both ATC and MC on having a straight line, or would that not work? They'll tell you. Like if they gave you, you mean if they said drawing natural monopoly? Yeah, could we just label it as a straight line? Or no. I want unless they said I, but what you could do is like, if this is your AT, you could just draw a straight line MC underneath it. Okay. All right, just take note, government doesn't set profits, they set price controls, right? So these price ceilings. Yes, sir. Quantity socially optimal? Yeah, on the price on the y axis. Which one? You have QFR, right? On the on the y axis. It should be PSO. Oh. And then like yeah. Should be PSO. Uh, yeah, no, but I don't take blunders for typos on the things. I said that. I said that. But good try. Mr. Bressler? Yes, that's me. Um, which outline are we following today? Are we following the one from yesterday? Still? Yeah, yeah, we're finishing up yesterday's. Okay, okay. 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 All right, so we get perfect price discrimination. Think for a second, colleges. All right, Luca could afford 60,000, he pays 60. Oliver can only afford 30. He gets financial aid to pay 30. Um, Justin can afford 40, he pays 40. Now, it's perfect price discrimination. It doesn't really happen. Like it's hard to be perfect with it, but it's theory, okay? So it's practice of selling the same product to different buyers at different prices which the colleges do, right? They're selling you the same product, um, University of Maryland, but everyone's paying different prices. Which might be a little true here too, but, and then there's some like other ones like movie theaters, trials, adults, and, and. Senior citizen. Yeah, that's challenge. Pays to be old. Coupons, if you like my wife and you put coupons, she pays a lot less shopping than I do. Not, not great examples, to be truthful. Students versus parents. All right. Man, I was stretching on these. All right. So again, if, I'm, if all of this line to pay 30,000, he pays 30,000, what's his consumer circle? Zero. If Barrett's willing to pay 40,000 and he pays 40,000, what's his consumer surplus? Zero. So on price discrimination, what is the consumer surplus? Zero, because everyone's paying what they're willing to pay. So in price discrimination, you have zero consumer surplus. You don't have dead weight loss either, okay? You usually have to have monopoly power, all right, to control the industry. The second thing is you must be able to segregate the market. 
What allows colleges to do that is they get mo all your financial information. So it allows them to kind of segregate the market. And then it's not good if a consumer could resell because like if I'm willing to pay 10 and then I could resell something for 50, like I'm making the money and the monopoly is, you know, is hurting out on their high end buyers. Okay. Which by the way, is something that no one says about college admissions, but I gotta believe colleges favor people who are gonna pay the whole thing. Like if there's a guy who's going to the University of Virginia and their FAFSA says they could pay 65,000, I gotta believe I'd rather have that guy than Luca who's paying 30. Like it just makes sense. Like no one ever talks about that, but that's gotta be like, they are a business. Someone had their hand up. Yeah, I mean, it is, but but you're right. They, they, it's a way to get around it. They would call, and that's why price discrimination, really perfect price discrimination does it really work. And you could sell your you could buy like a ticket to a game and give it to your parents, right? Like here, right? Do we charge you guys to go to games? That's pretty nice of us. Huh? Yeah, uh, Okay. All right. Um, even my playoff games, free. No, they're away. If they're away now, you gotta take the skills. All right. So here, this is just to show you. If the price is 10, the marginal revenue is 10. Now, if I'm selling two, selling one in 10 and one in nine, total revenue, Frank, total revenue is nine. Uh oh, what's happening here? What's coming back? So, what, what is dark going to be now? Downward sloping, but is it going to be dark or Mr. Dark? Should we miss the dark, right? Because MR equals price. <laughs> the return of Mr. Dark, Bradley. Yeah. All right, this is just showing you again how price and MR equal each other and why it's Mr. Dark. Okay, again, at eight, instead of like in a regular monopoly, we would be selling three at eight to 24. Here we're selling one at 10, one at nine, one at eight, for 27. You guys good? Okay, so you have dark now, right? M to demand equals MR, or MR equals demand equals average revenue equals price. You have Mr. Dark, okay? Um, in price discrimination. Now, I think I'm going to show you a regular monopoly here for a second. I am. All right. And I want to draw it on the board so it stays here. So a lot of times they will ask you um, if this monopoly turns into a price discriminating monopoly, okay? And all you do in your head is make D equals MR and MC equals MR. That's where you produce that. So there it is. But notice if I produce here at price discrimination, do I make more or less quantity than a regular monopoly? I make more, right? Here's the monopoly quantity. Here's the price discrimination. Now, I'm going to just draw in blue the profit box because it's going to disappear in a second. All right. So I'm going to fold the MR into demand. Right, because I want to make it price discrimination. I've got MC equals MR. I'm going to go down. That's my quantity. Now, the profit box MC to ATC and across. Look how much profit this thing makes. That whole green is profit. So, Price discrimination increases profits. 
increases quantity, no consumer surplus, no dead weight loss. Okay. I mean, we got a lot more profit, a lot more. Well, I wouldn't say a lot more, but we got more. Um, we got more quantity, and we're making more money. No consumer surplus. Questions on price discrimination? Yes, sir. Why did the price box like continue on past the? What do you mean by the price? The green? Yeah. That's just the profit box. I mean, the profit box, why does it continue past MC page demand? Oh, because for MC equals demand, you take it down to the ATC and across. I know, but then wouldn't you draw a line across as well? What you, across where? What do you mean? Across. I mean, like on the other profit boxes. Bring it all the way up. Oh, because there is no real price, what, right? Because Charlie, this guy up here, he's paying like 60, this guy's paying like 50. All right, good question. Yes. That's all new price discrimination? All new price discrimination. Wait, so what's that green? That's all profit. All right, the key is just to remember demand, MOR folds into demand to find the quantity M C equals it. Now, that is not the price, right? Because everyone's paying a different price. There is no actual price. Okay. So that would be like the average price. I'm not even sure you could say that. I'm not. All right, let's do some practice, take out some boards. Okay. A lot of questions in these like practice that could very conceivably be on to what you mean. All right, so if a firm produces 10 units of output, its economic profit will be, what are you looking for? Uh, there's someone next to you over there? Okay. Okay, I'll give you a minute. You know, like 30 seconds. Write it nice and big on your board because I'm blind. All right, what do we got? I've got some broccolis, broccoli. Oh, okay. Everyone got broccoli? All right, I, this is definitely a question that could be on tomorrow's quiz. You go to MC equals MR up to price. Uh, that would be 20 times 10 is 200 down to the ATC, 15 times 10 is 150. That gives you 50. I actually would go MC equals MR to the price down to the ATC. The difference is five per unit times 10 units, 50. Either way works. You guys got it. All right. Which of the following is most likely to occur if the firm increases production beyond 10 units?
one second. Okay, what do we got? I've got some Carolines. Carolines, Carolines, Carolines. All right, you guys are uh, tough. All right, what I usually do is like if it's more than 10, I just go 11, I draw a line up. There, the price is lower. I can see my profits would not increase. This allows me also to knock all those out. So I think my C is right, but why is B wrong? Definitely. That the firm would definitely experience a loss. Because look, Charles, if I do the 11th unit and I take the price up here, my price is higher than the ATC. I'm making money. Yeah, but they're, but they're saying, yeah, this is the profit maximizer, but that doesn't mean you have to lose money. You're not making as much profit, but that doesn't mean you have to lose money. So that doesn't mean like, when it said like experience of loss, that's not talking about like a loss relative to the like- No, no, right. It's saying a loss meaning, yeah, would the firm definitely make less money? Yes. Good questions. All right, let's do 54 first. The economic profit of the profit maximizing monopolist is given by the area. Phew, there's another one, Porter. I'm just like giving you the quiz for tomorrow. Yeah, 25 seconds. Okay. What do we have? A lot of Carolines, a lot of Carolines. Caroline, we are. All right. So I'm going to take MC to MR up to I, down to the ATC, which is L, across to U, R, R, I, U, L. Okay. What? Justin, did you have a question? You guys are good? Yeah. All right, let's do 55. Okay, 15 seconds. All right, what do we got? On the front row of Carolines, Carolines. We're rolling, man. All right. Up. Mike. In perfect competition, what does the industry graph look like in perfect competition? Uh, it's just supply and demand. Okay, it's, so it's supply and demand. So here, so marginal cost is supply, demand is demand. So you would be producing a K, right? Yeah. All right, which is T, they call it OT, and Q3. Uh, that's free money on the quiz. Okay. Okay, that makes sense to you now? Yeah. Did you go to all of them? Okay. 
It's easy money, Mike? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll put it on then. All right. Let's do 23 first. Which of the following statements is true for a perfectly competitive firm, but not true for a monopoly? Okay, 30 seconds. Okay, what do we got for 23? I'm seeing a lot of broccolis. Broccoli. All right. Um, the firm, sound perfect competition, you're a price taker, and, and monopolies are a price maker. All right, let's do 24. The perfectly competitive industry will monopolize without any change in cost conditions. The price and quantity would change in which of the following ways? Hmm. Interesting. You don't know, guessing. We could just look at a graph. Yeah, but I'm picturing on my head. Yeah, I know. All right. All right, boards. I've got B's, I've got a couple of C's, but I'm, I'm mainly a majority of B's. All right, let's look back. Here is, so if you're producing at a monopoly, if you're producing at a monopoly here, and you'd be produce, price would be R, and you'd be at Q1. Now it's perfectly competitive, you'd be T, Price down, quantity up. What was that? What letter? Okay. For the people on C, does that make sense? Can you explain that again? Sure. Wait, you said price down. All right, here. All right. A monopoly would be producing MC equals MR, price of R, quantity Q1, right? Yeah. Perfect competition. Supply and demand in the industry would be where MC crosses demand at K. So price of T, so the price in per the price of the monopoly would be higher than perfect competition, and you'd be producing Q3, and they'd be producing less. You graph it, right? Yeah, that's what I would. A lot of you will memorize it, or just Mike was trying to visualize it, but I would graph it. And, and the good thing too, Oliver, for most of the multiple choice tests, they'll have a graph on it like this, so you can just look at it. So if we were asking if it went from the monopoly to perfect competition, then the price would go down, would go up. Okay. All right. And by the way, that's a question they ask a lot, so it's good. All right. Two minutes. Talk about these with the person next to you. Uh -huh. I would elaborate a little more than just that. Say, or is 
Because you shut down, Shift ATC. Anything else? No, doesn't produce an allocatively or productive efficiency. It's not efficient. And what does it have then, Jacob? It's not efficient. Fedway law. Yeah, fixed cost. Does not affect marginal cost because it's not a per unit cost, but it would shift ATC. If it increases ATC up, it decreases ATC down. Fixed cost. All right. Correct. All right. We might need it for the next time. But it's we won't be tested on the computer. No, no. All right, have a great day. The quiz is just whenever we have a sister. I won't let you up on the next slide. So I know it's going to be a minute to go up to it. It's like a possible. I talk about the process. Yes, he calls. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Bressler. You're welcome. So you go ahead and just go down. You guys could also take out, like, we're going to finish yesterday's notes if you want to take it out. Yes. Uh, yes. Hi, man. Great to see you. Good to see you too, Mr. Yeah, come on in. Yeah. Oh, man.
question could be similar um, possibly to a question on the quiz tomorrow not exactly Quinn okay. I'll give everyone a minute to look at it <laughs> 